Hi everyone, I'm Anand Sitara, Assistant Professor in the Computer Science Department at the State University of New York, Binghamton. In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about how to read a research paper. Now, reading a research paper can be pretty daunting and challenging, and it's also a time-consuming endeavor. So I'm going to talk to you about how to read a research paper quickly and efficiently so that you can determine whether this research paper is of interest to you and whether you want to delve deeper into this research paper and if it is a research paper that you would want to explore further. So a research paper, depending on which area of computer science you work in, can vary from six to 10 pages in length. Sometimes research papers can be as long as 20 or 25 pages uh, as well. Now, when we are tasked with reading a research paper that is so long and is filled with technical details, it becomes difficult for any person to understand whether it's a useful paper to read and what is the main contribution of this paper and whether it is necessary for one's research. So to understand that, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to read a research paper. So the first thing in a research paper that you would like to do is read its abstract. So here is the abstract of the of a research paper and what you would first want to do is read the abstract carefully because the abstract would tell you what is the main contribution of this research paper and whether it is of interest to you. Now having read the abstract carefully you can make a decision as to whether you want to continue reading this research paper and whether it is relevant to you. In this way, it is a good idea to actually filter out research papers that do not strictly fall into your area of interest. Now, having read the abstract, say you have decided that you want to read a research paper. Now, I just want to say that this is a research paper that my students and I and my collaborator have written and I'm just going to walk you through this paper as an example of how to read a research paper. Of course, different research papers have different requirements and it's all going to be different. Now, once you have read the abstract and you decide to read the research paper, what you should focus on is to read the introduction. Now, the introduction will not have usually have any technical detail and will give you a high level overview of what are the main contributions of this paper and why and why solving the, the problem addressed in this paper is important. So I would pay usually pay a lot of attention to the first few paragraphs of the introduction. So the first paragraph here usually gives the motivation. So you understand why the authors are solving this problem. Now, this is, the subsequent few paragraphs usually highlight the contributions. Okay. So these paragraphs all will give the contributions. So, so once you read these sections carefully, uh, you know what are the main contributions of this work. And as I mentioned, the introduction usually will not have equations and will be easy enough to read. Even for a paper that is math heavy and has lots of equations in it, introductions will not have those equations, making it easier for you to understand the contributions. Now, once you have read the introduction and understood what are the main contributions of this paper, what I ask my students to do is to skip through the entire paper and then reach the conclusion. Now, once you reach the conclusion, you read it and what it would do is it would once again point out the contributions of the paper. So you understood what the contributions are from the introduction and by reading the conclusion, you would understand whether the authors have achieved what they claimed in the introduction and what is the main um, content of this paper. Now, having read the introduction and the conclusion, usually it is clear whether you want to investigate this paper further, whether it will, it, it is something that you are really interested in. Now, having, now, 
if it's a paper that interests you. So at this stage, what you should do is you should then go ahead and start reading from section um, from the problem statement kind of section. So there is usually a section called related work which follows the introduction. I would skip this section at this stage because that's not the main contribution of the paper. In the related work, the authors try to, to summarize the existing work in this area and highlight the gaps in the existing work and why and how their work differs from existing work. So what I would do is I would usually read the beginning of each of these sections that follow. So for example, here, I'll first read what this section is about. Okay, just that much, not going to the date and the details, and then read basically the titles of these subsections. Now, once you read the titles of the subsections, what will help you know is what are the contributions of that section. Okay, so if you go back to this previous page, it'll say if I read the first line here, it tells us what, what the authors have done in this particular section. It says that in this section, we discuss the water consumption prediction problem and provide an overview of the data collected to validate the performance of our model. So by just by reading this one line, you know what is the main thing that is going to be discussed in this section. Having done that, usually you skip to the next one. And then once again, when you get the next section, in this case, it's this section what you do is you read the first paragraph okay now let's just read it so it says that in this section we provide an overview of swap a smart water prediction system that takes as input historical water consumption data and outputs future water consumption predictions so what it says is you it is a water consumption prediction problem and it's based on history and it's going to output the future it then goes on to say that figure three shows the different components of our system Okay, and it describes the basic and then says that swap comprises of a data pre-processing component which pre-processes the water consumption data and a prediction component comprising of the proposed models that takes the pre-processed data to generate the desired predictions. Now, if we look at figure three, you would understand what is basically the contribution of swap. For example, the raw data comes in, there is some pre-processing which generates the pre-processed files, then they run their proposed models. In this case, there are two models, GCRF and LSTM, which we at this stage don't know, and it's going to generate the predictions. At this point, you move on. You, you then basically read um, these subsection headings so you understand why they have used something called a sequence to sequence model that's what the authors have justified after that they have described a sparse gcrf model by relating it to figure three you know that it is one of the prediction models that they have designed at this point we don't know any of the details so we'll then move on to the next section you'll see and then read that okay there is an encoder something called an encoder decoder or an encoder decoder model and okay, that must be the other LSTM based model that the authors have mentioned in that figure. The stage, you go ahead and then you come to the next section, which is basically the performance evaluation. Oops. So in performance evaluation, you understand that, okay, now the authors are gonna evaluate the performance. We first read the first paragraph, like we usually do in every section it says that we compare the performance of gcrf and deep learning models with two base slides linear regression and auto regressive integrated moving average arima models the code for our models and the pre-processed data and the experiments is available in three just by reading this paragraph you know that the authors have compared their model with two baselines arima and linear regression and that if you want to further develop on their models the code and experiments is available in that reference that is cited so so you know that if you want to build upon their results, you can easily get access to their code, okay? Now at this point, I would basically move ahead as, I was, as we have been doing and look at the different subsections. So, okay, so here they are talking about RMSE. If you don't know what is RMSE, once again, first let's just read the first line. So it says that in this subsection, we discuss RMSE results for our models. So, okay, so there is RMSE must be some kind of metric. That's what the authors are looking at. Okay, so now you understand that they have validated their model uh, with respect to some metric called RMSE. Now you move on to the next subsection. It's called MAE. And once again, 
if, when, if you read the first line, it says that Divrit skulls are MA results. Okay, so so what do you understand by just reading these few lines? They're, they're in the performance evaluation, they've compared their model with two baselines and they have looked at two metrics, RMSE and MAE. Then if you go to the next subsection, which is qualitative results, you uh, understand that the authors have presented some qualitative results. So MAE and RMSE must be quality, quantitative results. So they are also talking about some qualitative results here. Finally, look at the remaining two subsections. So you say that, okay, now, in the next two subsections you may not understand everything of course at this end. so you're saying that okay the authors are adding temporal features and varying sequence length these must be a couple of uh, things that are a part of the model and maybe they are looking at that at this point just by looking at this it is not possible for you to know more details so it's not possible for you to understand the whole thing but now you have an idea of what the authors have done now you'll also see that in this at the head of this subsection what the authors have written is discussion on swaps practicality so from this what you should uh, uh, take away is okay so the authors have tried to make sure that this system is implementable in the real world so it's something that is attractive so they also have a discussion on this so just by having this high level overview which must take around 10 minutes or so you have an idea of what the authors have tried to do in this paper now at this point, if you think that this is a paper that is something that you're interested in and you want to develop further, you should go ahead and start diving into the details. So in this video, my goal is to just give you a high level overview of how you might approach reading a paper. And I hope that this video gives you an understanding of how to approach a research paper and not get intimidated by all the details that are there in, this, in a paper.